the last bit of this model this module is now you know just looking at you know a couple chemical reaction types you know as we go throughout general chemistry we'll learn more and more more chemical reactions as we go so we have to start you know getting used to chemical reactions and being able to draw them on our own as well and so we have you know so far you know basically three different types of chemical reactions we've talked in uh in this particular module already about the combustion combustion reaction um the combustion reaction that we've looked at has been the combustion of propane but you can have many other types of combustion processes And so what you find in a combustion is you always have a sample uh, that is being combusted. We then have, always have to have uh, oxygen, you know, is required uh, for combustion. Right, what's a great way to stop a fire as well to just cover it up, right, and starve it of oxygen. So oxygen is always required for combustion. And then we always produce carbon dioxide and, um, and water. So you can kind of think of it as, you know, you can, in a general sense, you have a sample, right? You have oxygen, and then you combust to produce carbon dioxide and H2O. And so there is your basic combustion reaction. Um, there is the possibility of other products, um, but it really depends on the sample. So, you know, we could produce nitrogen gas or chlorine gas or, or other things like that, but it would just be based on, you know, the formula of the sample that we're actually combusting. Um, you know, most often we're combusting, you know, what we call um, hydrocarbons. And that's what propane is. It's a carbon and hydrogen containing molecule. So, it, you know, octane which is gasoline, right? That is a hydrocarbon and it undergoes the combustion process to produce CO2 and H2O as well. So there is our combustion reaction and it looks something like this. The next chemical reaction we should start to be picking up on our alkali metal reactions. And so basically these involve group 1A uh, metals. We've already seen one of these in terms of, if we look at our solid metal and put it into water, right? We got some very um, violent reactions to occur because we're producing hydrogen gas and hydrogen gas is, you know, flammable. Um, so here we have a, you know, a basic, you know, alkali hydroxide 
uh, reaction where we're where we're converting that metal, we're putting it into water, and then we're turning it into um, a metal hydroxide. So as an example, one that we've seen in the past would be taking two sodiums and reacting it with water to produce two sodium hydroxides that are in the aqueous phase plus um, hydrogen gas. And that reaction looks something like this. A third reaction, which might be called a subset of the alkali uh, metal, you know, reaction, um, and so let's let's actually put it in that subset, I guess, is a basic alkali uh, halide reaction, and so for that we would see something similar to what we see with the hydroxide reaction above that we're still looking at an alkali metal um, and so now we'd be saying well we would have two of those solid metals plus um, some type of halogen halogens exist in different phases so i'm just going to call this x2 and then that produces two of these MX ionic molecules or these uh, the metal halides, right? So we have here above, right, that notion of a metal hydroxide. Here looking at now a metal halide, right? Just kind of classifying these a little bit more in terms of hydroxide and of halide. So we could look at, you know, for instance, sticking with sodium and, and reacting it with chlorine gas, right? We would get basically table salt or sodium chloride. And that reaction could look, so it looks something like this. Check it out. Lastly, the third set of reactions that we see here is looking at um, the halide reactions, which, you know, we have the alkali halide reaction above, but we're looking at, you know, now reactions, you know, with group. 7A uh, halides, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, you know, and so we can do a couple different reactions um, with them, right, in terms of we could take, you know, in terms of a, a basic metal halide reaction. Right, very similar to the alkali halide reaction, but now we're just expanding to different uh, metals, essentially. So we're still looking at you know this metal plus our halogen to generate some type of MX uh, species. Um, but here now, we're not limited to Uh, not limited to um, group 1A. So, you know, as an example of that, we could look at maybe iron reacting with bromine, which exists as a liquid, to produce, you know, ferric bromide uh, as, as a solid. We would have to have, you know, three halves, 
for that bromine. Um, I know the fraction looks kind of weird there, um, but keep in mind that that's, that's allowable. Specifically, one half fractions are allowed with uh, diatomics. So with the bromine, bromine, right, we're just splitting, we're just splitting the bond in half. You know, not an element in half. So we, we can get away with that. Um, another example would be looking at um, another type of metal, which we don't consider as much of metal, right, would be hydrogen. So here we have a, a hydrogen halide. And we can also even see these reacting with one another in terms of halogens. Reacting bromine with fluorine. So quite a few reactions there. Um, if you look at all of these, they're you know usually involving something that wants to lose electrons or is you know less <coughs> electronegative, right? Has a low ionization energy, pairing that with something that wants to gain electrons, right? And has a very negative electron affinity, is, is the trends that we see in these types of reactivity. We can clearly see that with the metal halide type reactions. Um, but if you think about it, we can also see it with the alkali metal reactions and the metal hydroxide reactions. <coughs> One last example that I'd like to just stress because of the earlier balancing motif is, you know, with balancing, one-half values them are okay so long as they are associated with um, basically a symmetrical molecule or diatomic um, where the stoichiometry is splitting the molecule in half. And we're not splitting an element in half, right? We can't do that. So as a, you know, an example of, of that, we could look at, you know, the combustion of, of maybe, you know, butane. So here's, you know, just showing you an example uh, of this. And I'm just going, you know, quickly here. Um, you know, we would need to have four CO2s for our carbons to be balanced out. If we look at our H2O, we would have to have uh, five of, of those to balance out with the 10 on the left. And if you look at how many we have here, we have, you know, 
nine oxygens as as a result. So that means we need to right that means we need nine oxygens. So with that, you know, the oxygen being diatomic, right? Oxygen looks like this. Right? I can actually, you know, split that molecule in half. I'm not splitting an atom in half, I'm just splitting the molecule in half. And so that would mean that we would have, you know, for this reaction, we would have, uh, you know, nine halves O2, right? Because that would give us our nine oxygens. Or we could write that as what 4.5 O2 but remember this is only only possible with diatomics at least for us right there's some symmetrical molecules and stuff like that we can get into larger molecules but but we're just sticking to the, the simple diatomics so that is our chemical reaction module um, highlighting, you know, how we can use chemical reactions that are balanced to now relate uh, molecules to molecules and actually be able to determine, you know, how much of products we should be able to produce, how much of starting materials we actually need, um, and then do analysis at the end of the day to see how well the reaction went as far as percent yield um, and those other factors of limiting reagent, reagent in excess, um, et cetera.